OK, recording has started. So the daily agenda for today, uh, we're going to start um, classwork on. Um, well, multiples again, we've learned a little bit about multiples now today with our target here is explore contexts that involve multiples. So contexts are like situations, uh, real life examples, um, things like that that involve multiples. So we're basically going to look at some problems that involve multiples in the real world. Okay, so using what we've learned the last week plus and now apply it to real world situations. Um, and so okay. our homework for today, um, I know I assigned the unit 1A checkpoint quiz from yesterday and I said it was due last night. If you haven't finished it, uh, that's OK. You can turn it in late. Uh, I just want to see where you're at. I, I put a shorter timeline on it uh, just so uh, I could kind of urge you to get it done yesterday, not let it linger because I need to see that information and grade it and get it back to you so that um, we can progress into this next section because it was kind of like a break and now we can progress into the next section, kind of wrap up some things that we may not have really understand or understood in the first section, and move on to the second. So if you haven't finished that, please do tonight. Uh, there's no um, marking down for late work at this point in time. So get it finished if you haven't already. And then I will assign, um, I just posted it. It's called Hot Dogs and Buns, page 21 in packet, page 23 in the workbook. Remember, just about everything we'll do will be in your workbook. And uh, if you grab packets, then everything you do will be in the packet too, because I'll, I'll go back and print off everything that you need. That will be due tomorrow at midnight. So let me, um, you're back to me. Let me get this set up. There we go. Oops. Except you'll see all my notes. I wonder if there's a way for me to erase all this real fast. I didn't realize that everything I did in the first group, you could see in the second group. Usually that's not an issue, but let me quickly erase. And then we'll get into it. Sorry about this. I didn't realize that it showed up on your guys's. OK, now we should be good. Now let me share my screen. Thank you for waiting. Screen one, there we go. You guys are up there, awesome. OK, so you should see uh, section B, find factor pairs and multiples. Um, this is in your packet, this is in your workbook. If it's uh, if you're working in your packet, it is page 19. If you're in your workbook, I assume it would be page 21. I don't know for sure, but it seems like they're about two pages ahead in the workbook. So page 19 in the packet, page 21 in the workbook. It says lesson five, more multiples. Let's explore contexts that involve multiples. OK. So looking at this picture here, the question that it asks in regards to this picture is estimate about how many chairs are in this room. Okay, we could go through and uh, zero in and count every single chair, but how could we quickly estimate that uh, or estimate the number of chairs that are present in this room for this picture? What do you think? How could we quickly get a ballpark range on what the total amount of chairs are in this room? What do you think? Malia? Count the chairs on one and then. You can. Okay. 
so far you're exactly right. I love your thinking. Keep going. Keep going. Count um, the chairs on one and then count that table and then how much chairs are there. You can multiply. I love it. Great job, Malia. That's exactly right. I don't right. even know. What's that? I didn't even know it was right. You didn't even know? You got to speak with more confidence then. You know what you're talking about. Awesome job. Uh, so she said, count the number of chairs per table. I'm going to write it down, what she, what she said. So number of chairs uh, per table. Okay, so number of chairs per table. And then we also need the number of tables. And she said, multiply it. So take the number of chairs per table, number of tables, multiply them together. That will give us our answer. Well, let's zero in. It's kind of uh, difficult to see. I'll help you count. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten chairs at that table. OK, so if we were to go back over here to our equation that we we made. Scroll on over. There we go. There are 10 chairs per table. How can we f uh, quickly find how many tables there are? Elizabeth, what do you think? By counting in the row. Well, uh, counting the rows. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's count the rows. Then count okay. them together. And so count the the rows and the columns, and then multiply them together. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I'm. I'll help just because the picture is probably a little uh, small on some devices. I'm in the back corner here. You can see the green. So I have one, two, three, four, five. And since these are uh, kind of pointing in the direction, you can kind of see some chairs over here too. I'm going to say that there are six because I can see one kind of poking out. So I say six rows. And then let's think about columns. Well, I see one again in the top right. Two, three, four, five, six. But I see some chairs down here too. So maybe, this maybe, oops, I'm gonna scroll over just a little bit more. Maybe there's another row or a column right here that we're just not seeing. Because I see some chairs, uh, but not a full table. So I think it's it's probably safe to assume since this is just an estimate, right? We're not um, trying to figure out exactly how many are in this room. We're just going based off of this picture, what we're seeing. So I might include one more column up there on the top left, saying that this side here, uh, there's there's another uh, column there. So we have six rows, seven columns. So how many total chairs or tables, excuse me, do we have if we have six rows and seven columns of tables? Elizabeth said to multiply. So six times seven. Malia, what's six times seven? 30. Close. Six times five is 30. Can you skip count by sevens or, or skip count by sixes to help us? 35. So that's seven times five. We're getting closer. Let's skip count and, and see. Okay. Remember, we can always skip count to help us find the answer when we're multiplying. If we did six groups of seven, that's the same thing as seven plus seven plus seven plus seven plus seven plus seven. Okay, and that's a lot of sevens there, and it might be a little overwhelming to try to figure out exactly uh, what that value is. So what we did in first period. Uh, Abisai came up with this great way of grouping these together. He said, well, we can group 
those together, those together, those together. Okay. From adding in a row like that, we can group yeah. with parentheses um, and allow us to uh, finish it all in smaller bytes. So we say 7 plus 7 is 14. So each of those are 14. Well, we can regroup again. We have 14 of 14. Let's make those a smaller byte too. We say 14 plus 14 is 28. And we still have to bring down this 14 here. We haven't accounted for that. And now we have just one addition problem. 28 plus 14. What is 28 plus 14? Eileen? It was a question. OK, what's your question? Do we have to write this? I would encourage you to. OK. Yeah, you don't have to write down every single thing, but I want you to write down chairs per table, uh, rows and columns, how we're multiplying things out. All right, you don't have to copy every single thing down because that could slow you down. But the main points, uh, Camila, is your hand up to answer this question? 28 plus 14? Yes. All right, and what is that answer? 42. 42, how'd you do that? Did you just think 28 plus 14 is 42 or did you come up with some strategy? Making a 10, adding a 10. I just knew it was 42. You just knew it was 42? Great. Um, Again, going kind of off of that, that's awesome, Camila. And if you have that memorized, then great. Um, I just want to offer one other way that we can do this. We practiced this in a warm up uh, probably about a week ago where we made a 10. And we said, OK, well, 30, or 28 is very close to 30. Right, The nearest 10 is 30. So what do I need to add to 28 to make 30? Well, 28 plus 2 would give us 30. That 2 needs to come from somewhere. And it came from the 14 here. So if we took two away from that 14, that leaves me with 12 left. Right, so we group those two and the 12 together to kind of symbolize, OK, that 14 is moving down, but it's splitting into two different numbers, 2 plus 12. Well, a nice thing about parentheses here when we're adding in a row is we can move them around. We can shuffle them. So instead of grouping 2 and 12 to make the 14, we can group 28 and 2 to give us that 30 we need. And we bring down the 12 still. Okay, you following me? Okay. So this 28 plus 2 is how we get that 30. And I'll leave it in the parentheses so you can uh, just kind of see where it's coming from. And then we still have the 12 here. Well, 30 plus 12 is probably a little easier for us to do in our head than 28 plus 14. So breaking it down into those bite sized pieces uh, allows us to um, use our, our mental math a little bit easier. Not stress our brain so much. OK, so all that work, we got 42, 42, a couple different ways. Well, that was just the total number of tables. OK, and that was kind of a, a long way of getting to that. I'm going to zoom on over here. So we have 42 tables, 42 tables. We said that there are 10 chairs per table, uh, per table. And Malia said at the very start, once we find the total number of tables and the total number of chairs, we can just multiply them together and get our answer. So 42 tables times 10 chairs, 42 times 10, what would be that answer? Malia, see your hand. Oh, 420? Yes, it does. 
You got to speak with more confidence, girl. You know what you're talking about. Great job, Malia. Let me get my lights back on real fast. Yep, 420 chairs in total. Now, is this exact? Mm, probably not. It's exact for the numbers we have, but it's an estimate for the uh, total number um, of chairs we have in this picture. Right? We, we kind of assumed that uh, these tables that aren't shown, because, I mean, there's a table, if I were to draw them, I mean, there's a table right here that we're just assuming is there. There's a table right there that we can kind of see. We just see a couple chairs. Maybe it's not full of chairs. There's a table here, like where that arrow was. Um, there'd be two more over here. You see what I'm saying? Like, it, it's exact for the numbers that we have, right? We came up with seven rows, or excuse me, was it seven and six rows, seven columns, 42 total tables. We said 10 chairs per tables, multiply those together, and we got 420 chairs in total. Okay. I know that was a little longer warm up, but um, there was a lot of good stuff going on there. We had multiplication, we had grouping together, we had making tens, we had a lot of good stuff there. So I'm glad we did that. Thank you for uh, Malia, Camila, uh, all of your guys' help, Elizabeth too. Thank you. Let's move on down to the next page, 5.1, choosing the right tables. So in your workbook or your packet, it should be the very next page. I change my color on my pen. And let's get started. Students are preparing for an end of year party. The school has tables where six people can sit and tables where eight people can sit. Now, before I get going, I uh, when I see word problems like this, story problems, when we're using um, real life things, I love to highlight or at least underline the important information. OK, students are preparing for an end of year party. Do we need to highlight that or underline it? Uh, probably not. It's just kind of giving us some information, tells, tells us what's going on. However, this next sentence here, the school has tables where six people can sit and tables where eight people can sit. That's important information. So they have uh, tables where six people can sit and tables where eight people can sit. And the most important piece, uh, piece here is the six people and eight people. So we have two options. We have tables for six people, tables for eight people. That's very important, so we highlight it or at least underline it with our pencil. The students can only choose one type of table. OK, so I might underline this. They can only choose one type and they want to avoid having empty seats. So avoid empty seats. I may be highlighting a little too much, but it's important to um, understand the main things that it's asking. So we have two chair or two tables one for six people, one for eight people. They can only choose one type of table and they want to avoid having empty seats. So Jada's class, this first question here, Jada's class has 18 students. Which table would you choose for Jada's class? Explain or show your reasoning. All right, so we have 18 total students for Jada's class. We can choose between a table for six people or a table for eight people. And I want to clarify, we're using whichever type we choose, we can use as many of those tables as we need. So we're not cramming all 18 kids into a table fit for eight or fit for six. We're using a six person table multiple times or eight person table multiple times. So if we have 18 students in your class, which table uh, would fit Jada's class without having any extra seats or empty seats. What are you guys thinking? Camila? Eight. OK, why do you think eight? What's your reasoning? Since they're trying to avoid empty seats. Mm -hmm. And plus it could fill up. And, and there's enough room for everyone. Mm -hmm. OK, so trying to avoid empty seats, there's room for everyone. It'll fill up faster. OK, if we use groups of eight, so if I were to draw tables, let's say that they're 
circular circular tables. So there's eight kids there. There's eight kids there. So we have 16 total. Well, we need to have one more table to fit those students. But then there would only be two students there with eight or with six empty spots. I changed my answer six. <laughs> you changed your answer for six? OK, yeah. so why six? Because there would be less tables and it could fit all less 18. I mean, it could fit 18. Yeah, so there's three tables worth of six. So we fit all 18 kids in there, wouldn't we? Without any empty seats. So I, I'll leave that there. Um, so first table, six. Once we have a second table, we have 12. Once we have the third table, we fit all 18 kids. And that's exactly what we need. We landed right on 18 if we counted by six and we had six people per table. So if we were using our vocab that we talked about earlier this week, well, no, it'd be last week, we would say 18 is a blank of six. Is it multiple? or factor. 18 is a blank of six. Eileen. A multiple? Yes, that's exactly right. Nice job, Eileen. 18 is a multiple of six. Remember, multiple is the end result. It's the product of two numbers. So 18 is a multiple of six because six times three, that um, factor pair being multiplied together gives us a product of 18. So it's the answer of the multiplication problem. So 18 is a multiple of six. Awesome job. So in question one, we found, okay, Three groups of six gives us 18 kids, no empty seats. We can't um, use tables for eight people for this group. Let's go to problem number two. I'm going to change my color. Let's go uh, to blue, but I need to highlight first, don't I? So, excuse me, no, uh, problem two, Noah's class has 30 students. I'm going to highlight that, that's important. Which tables would you choose for Noah's class? Explain or show your reasoning. So a very similar question to problem number one, but now we're working with Noah's class. And Noah's class has 30 students, not 18. Which tables would you choose for Noah's class? I see Camila's hand. I see Eileen's hand. Let's see if anybody else is following along. Thank you, Malia. I see your hand too. Jocelyn, Elizabeth, Katie, Adelina. Any ideas? On which table we should use for Noah's class that has 30 total students? Tables for six, tables for eight. Okay, just for the sake of time, because we're already half an hour in. Um, Malia, do you want to explain the answer for this? Which table you would choose? I would choose one that maybe had like 15, 20. Okay, so 15 would work. That would be good. What if our only options are six and eight, though? Would either of those work? Yeah. Which one are you thinking? Eight. OK, so if we were to skip count by eight, would we land on 30? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Did we land on 30? No, no six. No. Skip count by yeah. six. Yeah, if we skip count by six, we will land on it. So we have six, 12, 18, 24, 
there's our 30 right there. Yeah. So since we can skip count by 30, or by six, sorry, and land on 30, um, that would be an option uh, for us to choose, a table for us to choose uh, to avoid having empty seats and only using that one type of table. So if we were to use our vocab again, like we did up top, 30 is a, Malia? Is a multiple. Yes, it is. It is a multiple of six because we can multiply six by something and get 30. We can skip count by six and land on 30. Mm -hmm. We could make a rectangle with a side length of six and another number and have an area of 30. It would be a possibility, right? So 30 is a multiple of six. Okay, last question. I know there's one more here, but we're gonna skip four. I'm gonna use green, I'm gonna switch it. Uh, which tables would you choose for Noah's and Jada's classes together? So if we were grouping both classes together, um, what would we wanna choose for a table? Can we find more than one option? Share or explain your reasoning. Well, first we need to figure out how many students are in Noah and Jada's class together. So, uh, Eileen, can you help me with that? How many total students are there be between Jada and Noah's class? 48. And how'd you get that? Mr. Ross? Yes. Um, I, I didn't turn on my microphone. It was someone else. Was that Elizabeth? It kind of sounded like Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. So I heard 48. That is the correct answer. 18 plus 30 equals 48. Okay, so 48 is our new number that we're looking for. Um, which table or tables can we choose if we only have the options of six students per table and eight students per table? Camila, what are you thinking? I think eight. You think eight? All right, prove it. Why do you think eight? Because when you skip count by eight, you land on 48. All right, let's see. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. You're exactly right. It does land on 48 when we skip count by 8. So we can say that 48 is a blank of 8. What is it, Camila? 48 is a multiple. It is a multiple because we can skip count by eight and land on 48. We can multiply something by eight and land on 48. All right, thank you, Camila. Is there another option? Could we use six per table as an option? This is the last thing we're gonna do. Malia? Yes. All right, and why can we do that? Because if you skip count by six, it also lands on 48. Okay, let's see. Hey, there it is, 48. It's exactly right. If we skip count by six, we'll land on 48. So we can use uh, tables with six chairs and um, get every single kid with a with a seat. So we could say 48 is a oh I forgot an A up here. <laughs> Blank of six. Kind of repeating myself, Malia, what is it? Multiple. Multiple. Yep. 48 is a multiple of six because we can multiply six by something and land on 48. Um Funny, funny thing with this, when we're skip counting by eight, it takes six skip counts of eight to get to 48, right? We have 
One, two, three, four, five, six. So if it takes six skip counts, that means that there are six groups of eight. Well, how many skip counts did it take over here for uh, six? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight skip counts of six. So that's eight groups of six. These are the same exact thing just flipped around, aren't they? Six times eight, eight times six. So that is why 48 here is listed as a multiple of both of these numbers because when you multiply these two numbers together, eight and six, you get 48. And we said that the product is a multiple of the factor pair that is multiplied together to get the product. So mm -hmm. that's why six and eight would both work. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. OK, awesome. Let's move on to the homework real fast. It is very, very similar to what we just did up um, up top with the um, chairs and the tables to get all the students in. Hot dogs and buns, that's the name of the homework, 5.2. Uh, this is a very uh, true, to, true to life example because every time that I go and buy hot dogs and buns at the store, they're never in the same amount. Have you noticed that? Hot dogs come in packs of six or eight or 10, and then the buns come in packages of eight or 10 or 12, and they never match. Like you, you're lucky if you get yeah. them to match. So this problem is um, dealing with all of Mr. Ross's hot dog bun frustration at the store. It says each package of hot dogs has 10 hot dogs and each package of hot dog buns has eight buns. Um, gives you the total that you need for the class picnic and it's your job to figure out is there a certain amount that we can buy for the hot dog buns to land on that amount or for the the hot dogs themselves okay so use what we practice up top here um, figure out is the number that i'm looking for a multiple of eight or ten i'll scroll back down sorry to give you motion sickness as i go up and down on here um, we're seeing if these uh, total amount that we need in our class picnic are multiples of 10 or 8 to see if they work. OK, it's just this one page. There's three questions, a couple parts to a couple of the questions, but it's very, very similar to what we did up top. So if you took good notes or if you want to watch the video again, because I am recording right now, um, you can review the video um, and see exactly what we did up top to help you with the homework. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording real fast and then we'll get to questions.